Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech, I'm Josh. Today we're gonna to be taking you through some changes to our version two of our FT Legacy in a special video, mainly focused around the landing gear and the tail. We really wanted to bring the FT Legacy back, but it was impossible to do so because we were no longer available to get the new landing gear. We went ahead and went back to the drawing board and made an amazing 3D printed landing gear that's easy to assemble and just as durable and springy. Along with that, we also took community feedback. We added on vertical fences to the tail to give it a little bit more directional stability when a twin engine configuration, and also add some nice features to the tail to make it look nicer and also a steerable tail wheel. So once you follow along with this video and see these changes, please go back to the original build video and whenever we start approaching the tail, you know exactly what changes to make or maybe even the landing gear. We're really excited to see the FT Legacy come back and we're really excited that you guys wanted to see it come back. Hopefully these changes only make the experience even better and we're looking forward to future feedback from you so we can continue to grow thanks to you. Let's go and get started. The first piece that we're going to be showing you that is different from the version 1 to the version 2 FT Legacy is going to be the rudder. The rudder is going to have a fold over in the front and the front part of the dorsal fin here that's going to give you a little bit more reinforcement. You're also going to notice an etch line down here where the steerable tail wheel is going to go. Your new FT Legacy is going to come with the extra components and extra tail wheel you need to make this part work. The first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and do a score cut along these main pieces and also a score cut along the back tail here. Let's go and peel this over 180 degrees and let's roll this right out for us. And then we'll do the same on the very top edge here. Now if you don't want the extra reinforcement you can easily just fold this right over but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can take our barbecue skier and we're just gently going to go ahead and drag right along this edge about three or four times making a nice cavity. Now that we've made that cavity where the barbecue skewer can stick in, I'm just going to mark with my finger right where that notch is. And now I can take my razor blade, roll it back and forth a couple times, and then crack it loose. At this point, if we did it right, our barbecue skewer should sit nicely down right in there and it's only going to be popping out about a sixteenth of an inch right around the same distance that you'll see our little notch on the very top. Once we're happy with that, we can go to our glue gun, put a bead of glue right up against the foam, and we'll set our barbecue skewer in place. Make sure when you put your barbecue skewer in place, make sure it's not favoring one side or the other, but sitting right in the middle. Once that's fully cured, we'll take a bead of glue, put it right down along the barbecue skewer, and this is going to be pretty much a precision match right to the edge. Notice as I roll this over 180 degrees, I'm going to pull this away very slowly. And if we did everything right, you're going to have a nice, clean, rounded edge right in the front. Same process on the front door, so the only difference is this is not going to have any kind of barbecue reinforcement. It's only going to be the width of the foam. So I like to take this and just kind of do a practice fold, go 90 degrees, just like you see here. And once we're happy with that, I'll put a very thin bead of glue down right over the foam, back down to the table. We're going to fold it up 90 degrees, and again, I'm going to kind of slide this away, giving tension on the paper, at the same time pressing it down and folding it over. These two foldovers are going to make the tail last much longer, especially if we happen to flip it over or it takes some abuse during the years of flight. Now that we've addressed the front of our fin, let's take our razor blade and complete a score cut right down between the fin and the rudder. We're going to fold this over 180 degrees, and making sure that our razor blade is nice and sharp, Let's cut a single bevel on the rudder side. Don't ever have to stress here. You can always make more than one cut if you need to. Just do your best to make sure it's nice and smooth. And also, when you go to move your rudder, it moves evenly in both directions. If you have any kind of resistance when you fold it in, most likely that means that you have a little bit of buildup or you need to cut a little bit closer to the paper than before. If you cut through to the other side to the paper, a little piece of tape is all you need to fix it. Now that we have our bevel cut, we're going to open this up 180 degrees and I'm going to put a thin bead of glue right over top of the paper here. This is what we call our hot glue reinforcement hinge. And then we'll scrape off all the extra. Make sure that you keep scraping until all the excess glue has been removed and the only glue remaining is pushed into the foam and into the paper. 
Give this a good 45 seconds to fully cure before moving on and also make sure you test your movement to make sure there's no more binding. Next step we're going to do on our rudder is going to be our steerable tailwheel. Now on our new premium packs you're going to see a little tiny push rod tube and if you're scratch building along with us at home you can easily use a coffee stir for this step. We're going to cut the length of our tube just below where you see this etch mark in the control horn all the way to the very tip of the bottom of the foam. right down. There we go. We can save the rest of this push rod tube for later. We're also going to take the included thin landing gear wire and we're going to slide this through. At this point we're going to start bending our wire. So the first step I want to do, and I'm going to kind of do this in reverse here, is we're going to start with the very back tail. I'm just going to take my finger right where it matches the length of the wire. I'm going to grip it with a pair of pliers. And I'm going to bend it 90 degrees. Next, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold my finger right where it hits the hinge line. I'm going to again grip it with the wire. And we'll go 90 degrees again. You have plenty of wire, so if you manage to slip any of these bends or doesn't feel quite right, feel free to just cut it off where you are. You have probably easily three different tries before you run out of wire. Now, it's very important in this section here that we make sure that this tube is pushed all the way up against so that it stays between the fin and the rudder. We're now going to let this travel down. I'm going to go about I'm going to go just below that wire. I don't want it to bind. And I'm going to very carefully grip the tube and the wire, pinch it down. Make sure not to squeeze it too hard. I'm going to bend it directly away about 45 degrees. Now it's a really good idea all the time, whenever you make these bends, hold it against the table and then where it looks straight up here, when you put it against the table, you can see it's not straight at all. It's very easy to fix this by simply grabbing the wire and twisting with your hands until it lays nice and flat. So as we lay this up here, we're going to want our wheel to be placed right around here. So what we'll do now is we'll grip this right here, just ahead of where the wheel diameter is. I'm going to bend it 45 degrees out. And then I'm going to grip this. I got a little bit more bold pliers here, so I'm going to get as close as I possibly can. I'm going to follow that same plane, bend it 45 degrees back, parallel. And now I can place my wire down. And I want my axle to be right about there. Ironically, if you're using blunt nose pliers, it's the same width on both these bends. I'm going to bend that 90 degrees. We're going to slide our tailwheel on. You can see it's not quite 90 degrees, so let's go ahead and bend that just a little bit more. I'm going to bend it right here. Many times people think that you have to get all the bends absolutely perfect, and you don't need to worry about that. You can always make those small adjustments after you place it on there. And that looks pretty good. See how she looks right here on the plane? Oh, that's going to have a really nice stance. And what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to cut it about three or four millimeters from the edge. Now a real easy way to lock this in is simply a bead of hot glue or you can even take a little piece of heat shrink, slide it over it, heat it up, and lock your wheel in. I'm just going to use some hot glue. While that's fully cooling, I'm going to take my extra little piece of landing gear wire. I'm going to drag it through my shortcut and just open up this cavity just wide enough for the wire to lay down. And now with this fully dried we can lay this right over top, press it down into place. Now we can follow up with a bead of glue right over top of the seam, just enough to fill in the gap. And we'll smooth that out with a piece of foam. All right, with this locked in and pushed all the way forward here, we're not gonna glue this down until we've installed it into our elevator. Once we wrap this forward and everything is glued and secured, we can then come back with a little piece of tape right around this bottom shaft here and secure it. One last thing to show you with the new style rudder we're going to have is the new style control horns are quite different than our previous wood ones. They're a lot nicer. You're going to notice a shoulder right around on both sides of the control horns and a backwards keeper here. This is going to push right through the control horn slot which is right above the wire and then the rear keeper is going to slide over it. And this is going to keep the pressure as the landing gear hits and pushes up. This is going to fully capture it. 
Now this is just a test fit to show you. When you go to install your control horns for the final time, just like the instructions say in the build video, make sure you put glue down. Don't rely on the little zip keeper right here to keep it in. This is simply to capture that back wire and keep it from moving up. Let's go ahead and put the rudder aside and we'll show you the details on the elevator. In this portion of the video, we're gonna show you how to install the optional vertical tail fences that are gonna give you increased stability in a twin motor conversion of the FT Legacy. Now this is really handy whenever you have a twin engine configuration because that's going to keep the air blowing right over the tail longer. Oftentimes when we're flying slower, we're taxiing with two motors, it's blowing on the left and the right of the tail, not giving a whole lot of stability, and then oftentimes causes ground loops or a little bit of a washout when you're flying high alpha. We definitely notice a huge difference whenever we're test flying it and it's very handy. To mark out where these fins go, you're going to notice two little tiny holes on the left and the right of your elevator. The vertical fins are also not going to have a straight cut through them, but they're going to match up perfectly, just like you see here. To add these fins, all we're going to do is simply locate these pieces, and what I like to do is line up either the inside or the outside of the surface exactly with the dots. That way you make sure that you don't have them tilted at all, giving you the tendency to yaw one way or the other. We went ahead and test fit them. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue down. I'm just going to line up the paper with one side, and there's the other. I'm going to hold nice and vertical, and I'm going to let it fully dry. We'll do the same process on the bottom, and then the same process on the other side. Now that the tail assembly is done with both the steerable rudder and also the fences for the elevator, let's go ahead and move forward to the front landing gear and show you how to bend it and install it. Now the key difference between the old landing gear, which is aluminum, and the new landing gear, which uses 3D parts, is that this is going to be a little bit more springy, it's going to take the hits a little bit better, and also it's incredibly easy to bend and install. To bed this landing gear, all you're going to need is a thick set of pliers, just like you see here, a ruler, and you can always cut it with these guys here, but if you have a pair of wire cutters like this, it makes it even easier. Along with our kit, we're also going to have the screws and the wheel collars, just like we did on the old version. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our thick landing gear and put it aside. You're going to notice the thick landing gear, it's 0.125 inches, and we're going to measure down one inch. We're going to grip it with our pliers and we're going to bend that angle to match our landing gear. Easiest way to test if we got it right is to slide it right through the hole. You can see we have just a little bit more to go. Now if you have a vise, a vise also works wonderfully as well. And as long as this can sit nice and flat on the table, you got your bend right. Next we're going to measure 6 inches. From the point where it bends right at the top knuckle here, and we're going to measure that right down to the wire. You can always take a little marker if you want and mark it. I just use my thumb. And the important thing for this is make sure that when you're bending this, that you're bending this parallel to this line right here. So we'll grab that and just twist it. There we go. Now we're going to take the thickness of the wheel that's included in the kit. We're going to add the thickness of our two wheel collars, which is going to give us roughly an inch and a half. So now we'll measure an inch and a half out. We have some pretty obnoxious wire cutters. You don't need wire cutters this big. It just really works well. Watch out, kitty. All right. One side of the landing gear is done. Let's go ahead and just make sure we have a test fit here. That looks fantastic. The spacing's perfect. Now we can take our wheel collars and we'll take our Allen key. If you guys need a basic selection of Allen keys or screwdrivers, we have an awesome new crafty kit that gives you a multi-tool that gives you all the bits and one handy little pocket screwdriver. All right, we're gonna do the exact same process now on the other side. All right, so just like before, about an inch and a quarter. We'll bend it down, quick test fit. A little long right here. We can easily just take our wire cutters. Definitely tell that we use good quality spring wire. There we go. And we'll measure six inches from the top here. One of the most important things that you gotta make sure that you do is that you don't bend this whole wire before sliding it in. There we go. And I like to just hold this here, make sure it's nice and level. It's very easy to push this down. That's perfect. And then we'll measure out an inch and a half. Bye -bye. <laughs> this 
This is why it's not safe to be in the studio with me. <laughs> this is gonna be incredibly strong on the airplane, and if you need to adjust a little bit, you can grab it and bend it. These plastic printed pieces are incredibly strong. But we don't want all the load when it hits the ground to be transitioned to the airplane like this. So what we did is we have two additional holes right here. And this is where our medium landing gear wire is gonna pass through. This is gonna take all the shock load and transfer it from the screws holding the landing gear on onto the actual plate itself and join them together. The neat thing about this is this style landing gear, which has the free STLs with it, can be used and changed in depth to make many different other landing gears for a lot of our swappable line. So if you like this style, you can take this and put it on other airplanes as well. All we simply need to do for this wire is to measure it roughly the same width as our fuselage. We'll go ahead and cut that. And one more. It's hard working with one hand. <laughs> and we can slide these through. At this point, our landing gear is ready to mount onto our FT Legacy with the same way that the build instructions show you how to do so. You simply have four simple screws that you get to screw in. We also included some extra holes, so if you ever want to change from plane to plane or even add some extra strength, you can definitely add some extra screws there or even hang an accessory. All right, friends, the three main components of the new version of the FT Legacy are now done. Please feel free to go back to the original build video, and whenever you come across the tail, the elevator, or the landing gear, you're going to know exactly what to do. We're really excited to see these in the air, and I hope this video helped. We'll see you next time.